uh, the chair becomes very tough, so I have to be. <laughs> All right, this is uh, the Ethiopian experience. Well, I am from United Nations University, Merit, from Maastricht. Uh, well, there is revival of interest in industrial policy, why we are all gathering here, but controversies still remain on the functional versus selective comparative advantage, uh, following whether comparative advantage defying in the nature of state and business relationship. There is also renewed interest in industrial policy making in Africa particularly, but there is little uh, evidence so far. Uh, particularly after the reintroduction of industrial policies uh, in recent years. So I aim here to examine the choice, implementation process, and outcome of the Ethiopian industrial policy. Well, it is one of the few African countries that have formulated and implemented full-fledged industrial policy even early in the uh, 2000. Uh, government has shown extraordinary commitment and ownership it implemented through subsequent development plans and various subsector strategies. Well, the outcomes so far are, appear to be uh, a bit mixed. Uh, we will see in detail uh, what does uh, that mean. I give you uh, some numbers here. Uh, well, the average growth of Ethiopia in comparison to the uh, Sub-Saharan Africa average, it's more, more or less more than double in terms of GDP growth in, la in the last decade. Uh, industry also grew by 10% and the manufacturing sector by 9.4%, particularly after the introduction of this, uh, the implementation of uh, the industrial policy between 2004 and 2011. If you compare to the sub-Saharan Africa, this is more than double. But we lag behind in terms of level. So this is a, a country in catching up context even with the sub-Saharan uh, average. So it is half of the industry value added into GDP in comparison to Sub-Saharan Africa, also the manufacturing value added contribution to GDP, and as well as manufacturing exports uh, as percentage of mer merchandise exports, it's almost uh, uh, like one third of the African average. So we have to do a lot, even if there is promising development. In Ethiopia, manufacturing sector emerges in the 1920s. For example, in 27, there were 25 uh, manufacturing uh, factories, mostly uh, established by foreigners. Uh, the sector starts to get momentum in the 50s. This was also uh, a period that marks the start of uh, a conscious plan to, to promote industrial development and the economy at large. Ethiopia has seen three regimes over the last eight decades, the imperial regime up to 74, the Derg regime 74-91, and the PRDF-led regime since 91. So these successive governments had their own industrial policies. I wouldn't go into detail, but let me show you this, 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 this table. The imperial regime, it was, uh, the, 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 the industrial policy was market-friendly, market-oriented, private-led, but dominance of uh, foreign-owned enterprises. Target industries were import substituting and labor-intensive industries where envisaged key player were foreign investment. Uh, well, the policy instruments, as you see, protection of domestic market and at the same time provision of economic incentives. The Derg regime period towards the command economy, every uh, medium and large enterprise were uh, nationalized. Uh, these were also uh, reorganized under state-owned uh, state, uh, enterprises. So there was dominance of public-owned enterprises. But the uh, whole strategy of industrial development of Ethiopia at that time was import substituting and also labor-intensive at, at the same time basic industries were favored. Uh, the key player was the public sector at that time. There were also protection and financial subsidy to, to the uh, public sector. The PRDF regime, post-1992, market-oriented, private-led, but also the involvement of uh, the state, well, strong state role, dominance of domestic private. There is uh, a change from import substituting to export-oriented. Well, the leading uh, engine of the uh, uh, private uh, I mean, the manufacturing sector would be 
the domestic private sector. There are also some uh, policy instruments that direct support and uh, provision of economic incentives. What you can see from this graph that particularly we have data from 1981 and to, until 2011, you see that the regime period was a declining uh, period until 1991. Uh, after the government change, there was some, some uh, improvements. Uh, but particularly, the last decade was, on average, uh, 10 or more growth in GDP, industry value added, and manufacturing value added. When we see the entry process, <clears throat> you can see in 80, there were only 351 number of establishments that employ 10 or more. Uh, employees uh, that go down at the uh, end of the Derg regime to 275. After that, it improved, and in 2010, it reached 2,172. This is like uh, more than tripled in the last in the last 10 years. But the uh, the public share has declined, as you see. Let me give you uh, the IDS, uh, I mean the present industrial development uh, strategy uh, major principles. Well, the primary principle is the linkage between industry and agriculture because this is based on the philosophy of agricultural development led industrialization. Other principles, export oriented, labor intensive and public private partnership. Mechanism of engagement, well, creating conducive environment and also direct support for selected sectors. Here are uh, the main ways the government sees to create conducive uh, business environment. When we look at the macro uh, stability, well, government envisaged single digit inflation, but there was a high record of inflation since 2005, 2006. It was also envisaged low interest rate, but virtually it was negative because of high inflation, but controlled interest rate. Uh, the real ex effective exchange rate was also appreciated due to high in domestic inflation. So there was uh, unexpected developments in terms of macroeconomic. Uh, there was also institutional and re regulatory reforms in this period. Uh, well, competition policy, business registration, investment and code, et cetera, et cetera. But, the main uh, 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 initiative at this period was the civil service reform program, and that has uh, improved service delivery substantially, particularly for the private sector. Well, if you see this doing business uh, indicator, they have improvement up to 2010, but a decline from 2011. What happened? There was some reversal of reforms and ranking in the post-2010, uh, when foreign exchange uh, shortage appears, government shut down 94 warehouse of coffee exporters. When inflation source, uh, it makes some futile efforts using price cap to control prices, and also it revised the business registration to, to uh, reduce the monopoly power of wholesalers, particularly importers, etc., etc. And starting 2011, private banks are forced to purchase NB bonds, uh, national bank bonds, to finance the government uh, huge investment, public investment. So these are reduced in some way the confidence and policy product, uh, predictability. That's why we see some declining here. Sectoral policies, well, textile, meat, other agro industry, construction, and micro and small enterprise are the priority sectors, but the list of priority sectors has been updated through time. Uh, well, there are some economic incentives that are also uh, direct supports. Uh, I don't have time to go to all these details, but I, ha I have here compared the three sectors, three industries particularly, the textile and the laser industry and the flower industry. The flower industry was a sector that emerged by itself but the uh, leather and the textile industry was uh, in the priority list for, from the beginning, and their performance you can see. The flower industry, it emerges itself, it reaches like 189 USD in 2011 for an exchange. But uh, textile, it's only 71, but it was envisaged to generate 500 million USD. But of course, this is like sevenfold in comparison 
uh, to the base year in 2004, 2005, but in terms of target, it is short fall. It is the same also in the leather industry. Let me uh, go through to the emerging and remaining issues. Where well, are the goals yet achieved? There is mixed outcome. GDP and so all other subsectors grew 10% or more, but the industry contribution to GDP remains stagnant, still less than 14%. Uh, the country more than double its country export earnings, but diversification mainly outside manufacturing. High entry of firms into manufacturing sector, but new entrants are mostly small. There is dual structure continuing. The new entrants are also mostly domestic oriented. Export sectors are underperforming. So manufacturing contribution to merchandise export remain low, even by sub-Saharan sub Africa and standard. There is in, in increasing import dependency and weak domestic linkages. So exporters increasingly constrained by lack of quality of inputs in domestic markets, despite efforts to address them. So, Regular review of policies and instruments need to be initiated with the aim of identifying emerging bottlenecks. But of course, the, the policies have to look the whole value chain and at the same time horizontal linkages. Second, there is an issue of choice of champion or activities or products. Why has the flower industry that has been, has been successful but not the textile and leather industry that received the most attention long before the flower industry? There are three alternative views regarding identification of potential products, whether government should choose or le le let it for uh, the, the, the market, whether it's combined. Well, the Ethiopian experience supports uh, the, the third view, but one need to introduce mechanism to elicit valuable information from the private sector on the potential industry through continuous consultation. This, this also involves uh, uh, continuous experimentation. Lastly, on the nature of public-private uh, partnership, the Ethiopian industrial policy made distinction between developmental and rent-seeking private sector to promote the former and to curtail the, the latter. Government provides generous incentives and support programs to build the private sector capacity, the carrots. At times, particularly recently, it has introduced a number of measures, sticks, alleging to discipline the reg private sector, increasing tension and policy uncertainties around the private sector. Yet a number of issues arise regarding the effectiveness of instruments. How much rent and how long should the private sector in the select sectors be given to bear fruits? What form of relationship should be instituted between the government and the private sector? How do you create an environment that maximizes the social benefits and limit rent seeking? There are critics that the instruments, that means the carrots and sticks, are not transparent, and policymakers tend to patronize the private sector instead of encouraging competition and innovation. There is also emerging concern that the public investment expansion is dwarfing the private sector. For example, credit for an exchange availability, etc. So, the public investment rate, I mean, a recent World Bank uh, report that is maybe in last month says that the public investment rate in Ethiopia is the third highest in the world, while the private investment rate is the sixth lowest in the world. So, a lot of money or finance is going to the public sector, like uh, drying the source of finance for the private sector. So by vibrant private sector is critical for effectiveness of industrial policy. Therefore, the government needs to address the above and other emerging issues. Thank you.